Now on Meridian, a change to our advertised program, replacing the movie Vestige of Honor, which will now be shown in the new year, a special investigation. Just over a year ago, Sudanese student Ali Ibrahim was savagely stabbed to death in a Brighton street. At the time, Meridian was making a documentary with Sussex police, and the cameras kept rolling as the murder investigation unfolded. The result is a unique record of a police force at work, as it puts together the clues and tracks down the guilty man in The Hunt. Uh, I have somebody in injured here. Could I have the ambulance, please? And what's happened? I don't know if he stabbed him or he threw off. You say you think he might have been stabbed? Yeah, uh, he's unconscious now. He's unconscious. Okay, so we get an ambulance to you. Thank you, Bravo 04. Reference your last of the Charlie Bravo units. Uh, we're not too far away. We'll have a look around also. Uh, arriving at the scene, the deceased was laying prone on the pavement road on his back. There was a gentleman trying to stem the flow of blood from the chest wound. There was a group of people standing around the body, in company with another officer who I had started administering first aid. The ambulance crew arrived, I continued mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation whilst my colleague did uh, CPR. That continued all the way to the hospital in the ambulance. Obviously, we have to try and bring him back, as it were, or try and keep him alive. Uh, we weren't to know he had been stabbed through the heart. Good morning, I'm Claire Martin. Police in Brighton have launched a murder hunt after a stabbing in the town late last night. The victim was a 21-year-old Sudanese student, Ali Ibrahim. He was a political refugee and had been granted asylum to stay in Britain. There are more than 1,000 Sudanese living in Brighton. The attack took place shortly before 11.30 in Little Preston Street off Western Road. About 20 past 11 last night, a man in his early 20s received a fatal stab wound in the chest. He was walking along with two of his friends along Western Road towards Brighton. There's no indication at this moment in time of, uh, of a racial motive. The truth of the matter is there are three Sudanese, um, there's a, a white guy we assume English and his, uh, and his woman. Um, but the comments that we have had described by those witnesses uh, at the moment, there's no suggestion of any uh, racial motive to it. He was looking for a fight. It looked as though he'd been drinking. They try to ignore him. They go down into Little Preston Street. The white guy comes down on his own. A fight takes place between the four of them, uh, and the end result is that uh, one of the Sudanese, a 21-year-old, is stabbed, we believe, in the heart. Got a couple of descriptions for you, then. This is the, the man, the white male in his 20s. Medium build, 5 foot 8 to 5 foot 10. Uh, very short, light coloured hair. Pale complexion, wearing dark jeans, a t-shirt, and then some, some kind of dark coloured coat. Um, there's a likelihood that he was wearing a peakless cap. The woman is in her 20s, 5 foot 3 to 5, five foot 4. She's white, slim build. Now, there was a scruffy little black dog seen not far away. And whether the dog's associated with these two, uh, we don't know. We don't know what the weapon is other than it's a knife of some description and it's wide bladed. We do know that um, the man was carrying a beer can and threw that down at the scene, so we may have some evidence left behind there, hopefully. I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll, I'll get some descriptions. That's exactly where it happened, and oh, as your right. sort of front door is right in yeah. the middle of where it was, and you've obviously walked out. Yeah. Um, somebody may need to speak to you. All right, just... Hello? 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 This is the rear of commercial. 
restaurants from Preston Street. Uh, and here we have um, one or well, a few residential properties. And we will have a house to house team just dealing with those. As much press coverage as possible in terms of the two people we're seeking to, uh, to trace. They may be down and outs, they may not be, uh, and it's something we need to establish. Background inquiries obviously into the deceased, um, but uh, very briefly, although we've had him identified by a friend, um, his relatives are in the Sudan and we've not been able to contact them at this stage. At the moment, I'm looking at a further briefing, say, around about six o'clock. We'll see where we are then. Obviously there's always pressure to, to resolve any murder uh, and in this particular case there's a fear that uh, perhaps uh, one faction of the community might uh, stir up trouble with another group um, because they feel the police aren't responding as they would wish. So yes, it's very important that we get a result. Seven. Good morning, I'm David Brown. Community leaders in Brighton have appealed for calm following the murder last night of a Sudanese student. Friends of the dead man are convinced he was the victim of a racist attack. Do you know why these racial attacks are happening? I've got no idea at all. I've got no idea at all. Uh, but you think happy. that might have been the motive for what happened? Yeah, I have a, I have a big feeling that's the motive. It could be a racial thing. Despite some fears from members of the Sudanese community, you don't think there was any racial element at all? There were no racial remarks uh, that we're aware of, uh, according to the, uh, the two Sudanese survivors. But um, having said that, the actions may speak for themselves, I can't say. Definitely this is aggression. I mean, uh, we just can't find a reason for that. But we have to protect ourselves. I mean, it, will, it, it could have happened again. If the attack wasn't racially motivated, do you have any idea what the motive was? <coughs> No, I don't. Uh, we do know that the attacker was in fact drinking. Uh, he was shouting loudly. There was every indication he may well have been drunk. Um, there would appear to be no other motive. How would you describe the attack? Senseless, pointless attack for no reason at all. I see you as the liaison man with the uh, community, the Sudanese community. Yeah. I think the message is, though, Dave, this isn't an attack on the Sudanese community. This is, this is, this is an incident that happened out on the street. Yeah. And, and there's no way, is there, that the person responsible is going to have known the Sudanese. No, no, I agree with you, but I think you have to look at the way the Sudanese community... Oh, that's right, but, but, but that's the point that, that we need to be making to them. Sure. Yeah, that it's happened and it, it, it's very regrettable, it's very sad. You become hardened to the post-mortem itself, um, but it always affects you. Um, they're not very nice things to uh, be involved in, but we're there to gather evidence, and as long as you keep that in mind, then um, just get on with the job. Can I just say one thing about house to house inquiries? We're the last people to be considered very often in a murder investigation, although very often we're the, we're the most important. So, what we really need to do is look at this in a sort of a positive uh, light. There's one other thing we're expected to do, that is uh, try and find the, the murder weapon, which I believe is a flick knife. Have a look at the drains. Uh, if we do find anything uh, which you don't like the look of, don't touch it, leave it there, and we call Sucko in to, uh, to, to have a look. Please. What did you see? Uh, I saw um, a man lying there, and uh, three or four or five, maybe, uh, policemen over him trying to get him back to life. You didn't see the actual thing happening? The actual attack. It's a lager can that was found uh, near or close to the uh, murder scene. We found uh, ridge detail in three places and we're in the process now of getting it uh, photographed, you know, down to the photographic department for processing and then 
checking against any suspects that may come in from the inquiry teams. The marks aren't too great, to put a technical term to it, <laughs> but um, there's enough detail in the, in the marks, in the ridge detail, for us to make an identification. I think everybody's aware of the cause of death by now. Uh, single stab wound, uh, uh, actually cut through one lung and into the aorta. It appeared to be just a single strike, uh, undefended. Um, the weapon we believe to be about an inch wide and uh, anything up to six inches in length. The regular two that we were looking at, the two and the dog, had them in. It uh, would not appear to be them on description. They appear to be alibi out as well, or at least um, they're about the area at the time, but um, we think where they were is, 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 is no good to us. The dog was about, and probably that's what's confusing us. Um, we're assuming the dog may be associated with our villains, when in fact it would have been associated with these two. That's a possibility, so don't get tied into the fact that a dog was definitely with our attackers because that might not be the case. Uh, the main, main thing today on the fingerprint side has been the, the two Cronenberg lager cans. The <coughs> second beer can, which I understood was open and possibly thrown at uh, uh, thrown by our offender, they've got reasonable marks on it tonight. Certainly the. Uh, the witness indicate that the offender did, in fact, uh, sling beer from a can over them before the assault. So, uh, you know, that may be well. That may well be our vital piece of evidence. I think the assumption is that the killers were is local. Um, we've obviously got a, a check on railway stations, taxis and bus stations and, and the like. Uh, hopeful that someone might come forward if, if he's made an attempt to escape the town. The likelihood is though that he's, uh, if he has left, he will return in a short space of time. Um, in addition to that, we have a, another name put forward where um, somebody's overheard uh, a young man saying that he stabbed someone on the Sunday night. It may just be bravado, but we can't ignore it. All right then. All right, thank you very much for calling. Thank you. Bye-bye. I mean, I suppose maybe the, the, the only real way of dealing with this is to take the ball by the horns and go and see him, isn't it, really? He's not the most amenable of characters at the best of times. Quite honestly. Not at all. I think he'll tell us to go and get on our bikes. I, yeah. I, I might be wrong, but judging how he's been before, I don't think he's going to be receptive. The best thing to do is get an evident, evidential warrant yeah. uh, and have it in our pocket. Uh, if he's amenable, we don't need to use it. Yeah. Uh, if he's not amenable, then we should use it. But let's get him in anywhere out of the frame so we can concentrate on yes. him. Yes. He might be good. He might be, might be the boy we're looking for. He's, he's certainly got the form. This is a, an application for a search warrant um, under the Police and Criminal and Evidence Act, and it's a search warrant for evidential material. Um, and what I'm doing, if I go and see this chap, if he refuses me admittance or doesn't want to talk to me, this warrant will give me the authority to search his house. I'll go down to the magistrate's court, make application, and then when I go to the place there, uh, I can get in, no matter what he says. That's lovely, right. As I say, if you just come in the front office and ask for me, OK? That's Robbie Clark, the CID. OK, bye-bye. <coughs> this is precisely the spot. As with most scenes, completely unremarkable. What we're doing here, just taking detail of uh, some of the um, 
uh, the number of houses, just so we know how many offices we need to, uh, to do the house to house. So it uh, shouldn't take too long. I think that's about the extent, isn't it? Little Western and Cross Street. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And if we get uh, other witnesses, then we might progress further. I've been able to make the decision that we will actually extend our house to house inquiries uh, a little bit further. There's a pub in the street, there's a restaurant, a cafe. Uh, there may have been something open at that time of night. We're trying to uh, find out exactly where these two ran to. We've got them as far as Little Western Street, uh, and we'd like to see how much further they may have gone. And they obviously met up at some stage, probably in that street. So we may, by making inquiries in that street and the one that uh, comes off it, um, we may find out exactly where they met up and where they went from there. There's a set of seven or eight uh, particular suspects that they want checking. I'm just struggling through the, uh, the slow process of checking each mark against each finger uh, because we're not sure which finger made which particular mark in that can. We will strive to get through that list and then let the inquiry team know uh, our results. This list of seven or eight may grow to 12 or 15 by the end of the day. Uh, and we have to keep going through until we come up with a result for them. I think we'll crack this job at the end of the day, you know, it's just yeah. a question of... Uh... It's a matter of getting through the rubbish to start with, isn't it, as usual? Yeah. Yeah, Rog, uh, I'm Rui. Yes, go ahead, over. There they are. Mate, I'll just... Pull it off you found the other officers, over. Yes, we're just moving in, over. We'll go over there, straight down the neck, out the way, OK? Slide in the back of the car. I don't want to talk about why you've been arrested going back in the car. We do it properly at the police station. You'll get all your rights when we get back to the police station. I'm happy to interview you at any time you are ready. seems strange that we've got this definite split of yeah, yeah, so yeah. many being absolutely positive we've yeah. got a woman and, and others being absolutely positive we've got yeah. a man. I think we've got witnesses uh, identifying witnesses and there's a confusion. Yeah. Yeah, they're describing witnesses right. in amongst maybe our offenders and we've got a split of that. That's why we need a chart. Yeah. Yeah. Need yeah. need 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 as soon as the chart comes out we'll have it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a, it's a thought. Yeah. Oh yeah it is. Yeah, We've got to keep an open mind on it certainly. Right then ladies and gents we're ready to go. Okay, busy day yesterday then. Yeah. You'll be aware that uh, we had a little swoop on this morning that went very smoothly. He's been arrested, he's downstairs. Uh, Wilf and Robbie are preparing to interview him. The solicitor's been called. Um, the search must be finished now, as I see Jackie. And uh, perhaps you could update us on that, Jackie. <coughs> We've seized a lot of clothing, um, just to be on the safe side. As we expected, a couple of knives, but we knew he was going to have them anyway. Um, we've got a Cronenberg 1664 can in the bin, which I'm sure you're pleased about. He's looking interesting, perhaps a little bit more interesting than we thought yesterday. Uh, we've got other people to concentrate our mind on in the future. Socko, where are we with the fingerprint evidence on the can? Yesterday, they were still trying to bring it up a bit more with photography, and they're expecting to uh, have a result on that today. Let's hope the uh, forensic helps us a little bit. I would like to establish with you, sir, what we are not making public knowledge, that we're keeping back evidentially speaking, if anything. It does help if we're going to get an offender talking at the end of the day. We'd like to get something from him that he can't get from anywhere else. Mm. What, we've, what we've kept out is uh, that he threw beer over them, 
the conversation, that is the specific words that the Sudanese witnesses are, are um, giving us, do you want to fight, man? You're in deep shit. Um, come on, guys, there's three of you and only me. Perhaps one of the, the big things that maybe we could keep in with us is the fact that the beer was thrown over yeah. the Sudanese. I see no point in any of us having to discuss that with anyone else. It could be quite significant. <coughs> that's going to be crucial because that's the bit that ties in the can yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the activity between the two factions. So it's also up to us to keep those sort of things w within the inquiry. Plenty to do today. Don't hang about with these uh, inquiries because, as I've said before, the, the clock's running and we're going to only ha have him for a limited time. Good evening, I'm Claire Martin. A man arrested early this morning in connection with the murder of Sudanese student Ali Ibrahim has been released without charge. Detectives have been questioning the man at Brighton Police Station. He's now been eliminated from their inquiries. I have some information from uh, a DC on the inquiry team. It may be worth uh, bearing in mind a particular name. And uh, we got his fingerprint form out from the system and we've managed to get uh, 16 characteristics in coincident sequence and have no doubt whatsoever that uh, that person made the mark on the can. I was more in fact pleased that we'd saved ourselves a lot of time on the searching side of things because I wasn't really looking forward to uh, searching throughout the system on, on the mark that we had. On the left hand uh, screen here is uh, the mark that's been photographed from the lager can that was found at the scene and the mark on the right hand side is made with ink on a fingerprint form. It's actual fact the left mid finger. We start by looking at the most uh, striking feature that stands out on the on the comparison screens, and we put a dot on the actual point of that uh, forking. So then move across to the corresponding area on the fingerprint form mark, and similarly we put a dot on the actual point of the bifurcation. And then coming back across to the scene mark, we work our way one ridge down. Again, we've got a bifurcation pointing in the other direction, downwards sort of uh, direction. We've come across, again, there's the bifurcation down. And then we build a little picture up around those ridges, counting uh, the same number of ridges uh, between the characteristics on each side, until we build up the 16 uh, points required to take it to court. We've had some developments. In fact, in the last half an hour, you said an ID on the finger mark on the can. Uh, no. That's right, um, but uh, obviously we are going to jack up an operation for early tomorrow morning. <laughs> right, ladies and gents, thanks for coming back. Good news, we hope. Uh, had an ident on the, the can. That's the can that uh, we wanted the ident from, the one at the end of Little Preston Street. Uh, it goes down to an Ian Scott Leaney. That doesn't mean to say he's the fellow that uh, wielded the weapon. Um, he might be the last one that held the can, but that doesn't mean to say, of course, that his oppo didn't hold the can as well, and it, that's his mark that we got out of it. But having said that, the description on Lee looks good, uh, so we've got to work hard on finding the associates now um, to see whether or not we can find a little squirt that goes with him. Have you got the photographs there? Do you want to sort of wind those round? Steve, you nicked him. Put him yeah. away. In fact, he should still be inside. Yeah. 15 months you got in March. Um, 15 months in March. What's he doing out now? Um, it's a system, sir. <laughs> 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 There's a nice he um, normally wears a hat. Thank you. Uh, peakless and last time, because you notice he's got that cross on his head, normally the hat comes down and covers that. It's normally sort of a, like a, sc a woolen skull type cap. Uh, peakless. He's, he's got a prominent nose. Um, on the cages I've met him, he's always had a skinhead when he's taken the hat off. He's got uh, various niceties tattooed on his lip, etc. But um, when the hat's pulled down, you don't see that much of his tattoo. He's got some tattoos on his neck as well. 
Uh, very, very violent. Well, we know how to deal with that uh, once we know where he is. We were looking maybe to a bit of a hit tomorrow morning first thing. <coughs> it might be that we might just sit on the uh, social for the signing on just in case he turns up there um, and maybe get a bit more, uh, another day to work on information before we start busting addresses. As you gathered from the meeting uh, earlier on, we, at the moment we cannot house Lini. Um, so everything that we do um, tonight and tomorrow, we'll be looking to find out where he lives. And with a bit of luck, we'll actually pick him up through um, signing on. His gyro is sent to a care of address at the uh, Ferrari London Road. Um, I want some research done on that and I'd like you two to look after that. Um, we have to, the, the whole basis of this is that we need to be extremely discreet about our inquiries. inquiries. We do not want it to get out the name of the individual that we're actually after um, because as soon as that happens, one way or another it will get back to them. This is the place we're looking for, the Priory, which is possibly the most recent address we've got for this chap. Um, it's a postal address of, of sorts that he collects gyros from. What we'll probably do is, although there's a large number of flats, if we can get near the front door ourselves, we'll be able to see what type of entry system there is. Um, and usually, if there is a caretaker, he's actually displayed on the entrance system. So we'll park up far away as we can get and go and have a walk round. We're going to put him out as wanted tonight. That's important because, obviously, uh, if somebody checks him up in London, he's done a runner, or, you know, he might pull a knife out again. We've got to put a warning, some warning notice out tonight. What date was that? The 8th? 7th. 7th. PRO or anything, or just, like, leave it like that? No, that's right. Leany, L-E-A-N-E-Y. Marks or scars? Loads of them. He's absolutely riddled with scars, with them, um, tattoos. What MO would you like? With knife, yeah. stabbing, one through the heart. After not quite a sleepless night, but we've decided that we're gonna we're gonna wait. On Tuesday our man is due to collect his gyro. We're going to just check to see that he is a re regular collector of his gyro and um, we're going to be there ready for him. The day after, if he doesn't collect his gyro, then we will be uh, boshing in some doors and finding out exactly where he may be. Jeremy Payne uh, with Wilf and this little team will be working on the research on Leany and putting in priority order those addresses that we'll be uh, looking at on Wednesday. Chances are we'll have 20 or 30 addresses at least that we wanted to uh, to look at, so we've got to take the best option first. Right. <clears throat> Any views on that course of action? Anyone think we should be doing something different? Speak up. Right, so we set up an operation for Tuesday to capture him when he collects. If that fails, then we have a, a really busy day on Wednesday. <laughs> It's the idea here. We'll probably pick, say, five teams, um, five arrest teams, for want of a better word, or going in teams. Um, they will, uh, having got in, make an assessment as to whether there's anything in there for us or not. If we're looking to search those addresses, we would then bring in a search team in the SOCO. Yeah. And then those teams can then move on. You know, we're going to have five teams that hit five addresses, yeah. and then as soon as they've finished with those ones, they go on to another five. I think we're a little fortunate. I mean, we've got the Tune Hill house to start with, so yeah. that's not going to be too much problem, and they're right next door to each other. People have a nasty habit of going up in lofts, don't they? You've either got a choice. You've got a choice. You either smash your way in, 
and, and get in quick, quick, or you provide sufficient manpower to be able to surround the place and knock on the door. Yeah. Uh, and I would have thought an average of four, we're going to at least, we're certainly going to be looking at 20, 25 troops, I would have thought. Plus a search team held back, plus suckers, plus exhibit officers. Mm. I would, I would have thought we'd be looking at the whole of the burglary unit for that yeah. moment, wouldn't we? Neither the family have spoken to a number of people who were there on the spot, and all of them confirms that it is a racially motivated incident. There is no other motive whatsoever. So community wanted to do something, uh, but the elders of the community are trying to ask them for peace and calm, and uh, that's what we're trying our best. When uh, the real brother of uh, this uh, disease comes from Sudan on Sunday, they wanted to have a big meeting to see that what action they wanted to take. At the moment, we're trying to uh, ask them that uh, uh, let the police uh, uh, work investigating should take us due course. Brighton police admitted for the first time today that there was a racial motive to the murder on Sunday of Sudanese student Ali Ibrahim. Friends of Mr Ibrahim have always maintained he was the victim of a racial attack and have called for better police protection. Uh, no, I'm no, I'm sorry, but I'm going to dictate how we're going to do this. Uh, you've got a press release. You can ask me issues from the press release. Right, I've got a press release, yeah. So you can ask right. me issues from the press release. Okay. I don't want to start doing a, uh, ad hoc issues. Yeah. Can I ask you why the uh, incident has now been categorised as a, as a racial attack? We have nothing to gain or nothing to lose by categorising it as a racial incident. This inquiry is a murder inquiry, first and foremost. And as such, it receives the full resources of Sussex Police to deal with. And simply now, because it's classified as a racial incident, does not mean that it changes our response to it. We have put all the resources into it. We have more than 45 officers currently investigating it, and they are going ahead in a robust way to try and solve it. The fact that it's now classified as a racial incident has no impact on that. And I think so that's, if, if I we think quote that's that from Roman Drive. The only mm. thing that worries me is people keep on talking about this cross. Now, I can't see it's any high removal scar. Pardon? Very high on his forehead, isn't it? What, well, higher than the photo? I think you find it's the No, well, there. see, this, this is where he's got the zero one here now, but. He's got a tattoo in the middle of his forehead, that's it. I mean, to be fair, we don't get too many people with tattoos in the middle of their forehead. Yeah. Not many. Just uh, wait and see now. I'll give you the nod as soon as we know. OK. It's a pressure day, as they say. Yeah, fingers crossed. Oh, you get um, butterflies, you know, a bit of excitement. Um, you know, it's, uh, it'll be a long day, I guess. You get ups and downs with all, all cases. I mean, uh, there'll be elation if he's arrested uh, two, or th two or three days' time. If we're no further forward and he hasn't turned up, uh, that might be a problem for me in, in as much as I've got to continue to drive the team to say, right, now we've got to go and find him. Uh, bit of a waiting game today, as you know. We're all jacked up waiting for someone to appear later on today. Around about 11 to 11.30 is the time we should be expecting him. Uh, but, of course, he can pop in any time at all. It's anybody's guess whether he'll be here today. I think we've done our very best to keep it to our chest in the, in the hope that um, he will turn up today. If he doesn't, then uh, obviously we'll be in the stage where we can circulate his name at least, but clearly uh, not his photograph. We've got the uh, brother of the deceased coming in at uh, 11 o'clock this morning, together with Awad, another gentleman from Sudan, and a friend of Ali's. Uh, they're all coming in, and I should be seeing them in the... Uh, Chief Super's office at 11 o'clock today, just to let you know. They want to know what's going on, obviously, and where we are. I'll give them a view of the incident room. I'll try and explain to them exactly what we're doing. Yes, it's 
These are our computer systems and uh, all information comes into the computer and it is typed in and the computer will then link descriptions so it will identify and, uh, and show a, an association between people. It makes sure that we do not miss any piece of information. If we try to remember everything, we would forget. So it goes into the computer and it will not let us forget anything. He's about to say that actually when they receive the information, his sisters were at that moment preparing a tape record of greetings and telling the news of the family in Sudan for him. So when they received that letter, it was really a very big shock to them. Up to now, even some of them do not believe that it's really have taken place. It's actually good circumstantial because there's no reason for him not to sign on. Not at all. He knows that he can't get his money unless he does. No. And his behaviour pattern in signing on has been excellent. Mm, that's right. Not all bad. No, it's not all bad, that's right. Unless, of course, he signed on in Glasgow or somewhere different. And uh, we won't know about that until maybe tomorrow. Slightly deflated. Uh, it hasn't turned up between 11 and 11.30, which was the uh, vital time for us. Having said that, premises are open until 4, 4.30, and uh, we'll be there waiting. If that doesn't happen, then, as you know, we'll be uh, very busy tomorrow, starting very early. And we'll, we'll get something tomorrow. Definitely. The object of the exercise this morning is to trace, locate and arrest Ian Scott Leaney on suspicion of murder. His description is 5 foot 8, medium build, late 20s. He was known to have stubble, he's now probably got a beard. He wears a Benny hat we believe. He's uh, violent. He may be in possession of a knife. As far as the likelihood of him being in the premises you go today, your guess is as good as mine. We've been keeping tabs on various addresses in the last few days. He's not at any of his local haunts. He didn't turn up to sign on for his gyro. And that's usually a, there's usually a pressing need for him to do that. So there's a fair chance he's <coughs> lying low and quite likely outside of Brighton & Hove. Having said that, we could turn him up today. What we've done is we've prepared warrants for six addresses, evidential warrants, and there'll be another 18 or 19 addresses to visit. We're also after evidence, those items that I've run through, so be aware as well as speaking to people, establishing who they are, you're looking for these items that we are trying to find. And finally, and very importantly, we are after intelligence. If you get nothing else, you must make sure you speak to everybody in the addresses that you go to and ask them what they know about Ian Scott Leaney and have they heard anything about this job. I make the time 17 minutes past six. I'm in 15 minutes time, which will be 6.32, I shall expect the teams to be knocking on the first door. Has anybody got a problem with that? OK, thank you very much. Off you go. Best of luck. They're going to go for a main activity, so where do they think? It's probably the time of night, there's no lights on there. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it's basement. Is it? Yeah. It's just one flat.
search for address. So it's probably best if you set yourself up and see what we're doing. All right. You wakey wakey now. A little bit. What's your name, sir? We're police officers. We're from Brighton Police Station. No, no, it's not a dream. There's our identification. Yeah. We're executing a search warrant at this address. The number of us here. Yeah. Let's just get ourselves organised and you can get dressed and then you can see what we're doing. Alright. Alright. What do you want this? I take it you're bulky buff under there, are eh? you? I'm Detective Sergeant Welfare. I'm going to charge you. I'll have a word with you when you've dressed and explain to you what's going on. And maybe we can have a chat. Mm -hmm. Alright. You live here on your own? Yeah. Okay. There will be someone up to um, do your window. Sorry to get you up so early in the morning, but hey, there you go. In fact, this could even be a repair man here. There you are, look at that. There's service for you. And with a smile too. All right? Right. You all right? Yeah. Sorry about that one. Right. right. Onward and forward, as they say. Got the power draw in there. Yeah. Take that one into there. I'll take measurement measure on that one. Yeah. Forward that one. Yeah. Right, new lock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cyril three four zero. A request for East Sussex Fire Brigade. Have they got a Sorry, turntable ladder or similar free to assist us to search a roof right on the third now floor level? That's all I've completed. Done, done, done. Two. That's got to be done. That, we've got to go back there, haven't we? We've gone very well this morning so far. We've uh, found someone that will tell us that uh, our suspect was seen actually last night. Uh, we don't know exactly where he went from there last night because the person that took him, uh, we haven't traced yet. We found that there were, or we've been told, there were a group of them together on the night of the murder. And uh, they've been placed in a certain address. It would appear that uh, there is a planned alibi uh, involving a number of people. We don't know precisely how many, at least five. Uh, so clearly our uh, options now are to trace these five urgently and uh, question them all and find out exactly if their story is, is the same, uh, whatever. What is interesting is that the address at which our suspect was apparently on the night of the murder is in the right direction and just around the corner from the Edward Street shop where the can may have been purchased. Uh, so that actually gives us a nice route from the address where they were uh, allegedly sitting together playing cards uh, and then someone may have left that, left that address, passed through Edward Street, purchased the can and then moved on to, uh, um, to commit the murder. What, for 16? Yeah. Address 16? First for news, Southern FM with classic hits across Sussex on 103.5 and 102.4. Southern FM. Police in Brighton launched a series of dawn raids this morning in the search for the killer of Sudanese student Ali Ibrahim. A number of people are now being questioned at Brighton Police Station and police say the search for others is continuing. A substantial amount of property has been seized during the raids for forensic examination. You want to obviously look for X-ray 1 um, and if he's there, do the business. So you, you understand what I'm saying, don't you? Okay, so you want to get around there as quickly as possible. Be aware X-ray 1 could be there. Look out for this motorcycle, get in there, preserve your scene. Um, and preserve your witnesses in terms of separation. Happy? Get back to us as soon as you can. Bye.
Yeah. In the address? No, just going. Right. But he knows. One four three, it's west from Plaistow Close, number eleven Plaistow Close towards Race Hill. Same description on close, we have none yet, over. <coughs> Any update on the suspect's location, over. Negative, uh, placed out close towards Race Hill, grey jacket. The address just prior to this one had given us an indication that uh, there may be something amiss at this address and our hopes were up a bit. That's why I put the officers around the address. This was our 12th address. Zero one. Would you like Brown Grove now? Yeah, received. The map yeah, was stuck to one. the back of that yeah. thing. One for one. Yeah, one in custody. Hawley Place. Received. Is this X-ray one over? Confirm X-ray one. Banged on the door. Was a, you could see a woman in there, and there was a lot of uh, shuffling about. She came to the door, very evasive, and then we heard a bang coming from the back. She said that the baby had fallen over. I went in and saw the, the back end of someone going out through the window. Lucky we had the other, the van load with us. They've um, gone around the side. There's been a bit of a chase through some gardens. We got him down the, ba uh, the back of, I think it's Horsham. Zero two make as well. Uh, first unit on scene, Hawley, close update, over. The next time I saw him, he was already in custody with the officer with him. Very subdued. Uh, he was probably expecting it. Had time to think about it. What more could he do? One in custody. In custody. Yeah, X-ray one. X-ray one? Yeah. Right, good. Class unit, call him, repeat. Stand by. Do you want the inquiry team now? 151. We're going to need a search team there. Yeah, the search team. We've got a search team on Soccer. Yeah. Soccer and search team are on the road. One four two, the car. We've got a uniform unit can go to eleven place over as soon as possible. There is a woman there who was a vital witness. Ginger head with a young child. Um, we went to the front, he went out the back, and we've had to leave her in the, the melee of it all. See if she can uh, be uh, detained at that address. Over. Yeah, received. The brother zero one here. Reference to the last with the bottom of white talk. Way if you'd like it. Yeah, zero one. If you attend eleven place over close. And uh, see if the woman's there, either. Right, Tony, can I speak to Mr Foster, please? Right, it's X-ray one in custody. Stand by. Um, Wilf wants to get to Hove. Um, we'll get him transported to Hove. Zero two. We're going to get a search team up there um, and take it from there. And then... Zero, zero one. Uh, yes. Can you stand down, zero two. Uh, All right, close. cheers. Have you got the ginger-haired woman, over? I'm pleased that, that we've got him. Uh, you know, I think we went away yesterday I mean, the observations didn't work to arrest him. I think a lot of us went away probably with the idea that he'd left Brighton and it would then be a long, hard slog to find him. But as a result of all the operation we've put together for this morning, um, we've managed to flush him out. And uh, I think this is where the job now begins to get resolved and we see what he's got to say for himself, if any. That's what detective work is all about, being thorough. We started with an address that provided more information, other addresses, we continued with that, and we got there just in time. I mean, another five or 10 minutes, he might have gone, so it was going some. We, I thought in the early stages, we were very close to him. Then I felt that we were perhaps uh, backing away a little bit, and uh, he was too far ahead of us. But uh, as it happened, we were able to move fast enough to, uh, to catch up with him. You need a bit of luck, but you've got to stick with uh, your lines of inquiry. I'm Detective Sergeant Welfare from Brighton Police Station. I've just come to tell you, make it clear to you, that you're under the arrest for the murder of Ibrahim Ali. A week ago on Sunday night. We've got a caution that you do not have to say anything unless you wish to do so, but anything you do say will be maybe given in evidence. Do you understand that? Once we've booked you in here, um, the custody officer will give you your rights. Um, and I'll be the officer that will be interviewing you at a later date. OK. Other than that, we don't propose to talk to you about anything that's happened until 
it's uh, done on tape properly. Okay.